Hi everybody. Last video, I promise. <laughs> the explanation of the last three topics, we're going to be going over the Chicano rights movement, uh, black power movement, and firstly, the women's rights movement. Okay, so here we go. Women's rights movement, this is a document that was uh, forming the National Organization of Women, an organization still around today. Um, to give you a little background on the National Organization of Women, it was formed in 1966 and it was inspired by the passage of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Founding members of now include Dr. Polly Murray and Betty Friedan. Murray was a Yale law professor and also a member of the President's Committee on the Status of Women. Friedan, very famous feminist, noted for her 1963 book, The Feminine Mystique. Okay. And in that book, Friedan had surveyed women who had graduated from her alma mater, Smith College. And in surveying these women, she found out that not all the women were fulfilled housewives as society was led to believe. She found that most housewives were actually looking for more a career, what have you. So she published her findings in The Feminine Mystique, which is a groundbreaking piece of work. One of the findings in her book is that most stay-at-home moms' wives take longer with their household chores than women who work outside the home. I found that interesting when I read the book. I'm a very active person. I read this book during a, in between semesters during a break. And I remember reading that part, and I always read like for an hour before I go to bed just to relax. And I remember looking at my husband going, oh my gosh, it's true. I had been taking longer with my housework since I've been off of work. It's interesting. Main flaw with the feminine mystique, though, is the fact that it was mainly geared towards white middle class women. So keep that in mind. Okay, the next topic you can go over. Chicano rights movement, the background of Cesar Chavez and the United Farm Workers. United Farm Workers is still an organization around today. Um, Cesar Chavez was born in Yuma, Arizona in 1927. He fought for Latino American rights. He learned about injustice early in life because his father was swindled out of land that was they had been living on by unscrupulous whites. His family moved to California where he was banned from speaking Spanish in school and experienced extreme prejudice. After he finished eighth grade, he became a migrant farm worker to support his family after his father was hurt in an accident. And Cesar Chavez basically dedicated his life to fighting for rights for migrant workers. 1962, Chavez along with Dolores Huerta formed the United Farm Workers. And like I said, it's an organization still around today. The main purpose again is to fight for the rights of migrant farm workers. UFW went on strike to protest treatment of migrants by California table grape and lettuce growers. 1968, Chavez engaged in a 25-day hunger strike, which was amazing. During the strike, he was visited by Senator Robert F. Kennedy in a show of support. There's famous pictures of that, in fact. Okay, last topic I will be going over is the Black Power Movement. What you got to understand is there was a split in the Civil Rights Movement, everybody. On one end, there were those that wanted to continue to follow Dr. King down the road of passive resistance. On the other end, there were those folks that said, look, we've gone down the path of passive resistance long enough. It hasn't gotten us any results. We need to be more aggressive. So they were very frustrated individuals feeling that way. Black Panthers was a big part of the Black Power Movement. It was a group formed in 1966 by Huey Newton and Bobby Seale, and they fought for African-American rights, particularly against police brutality. Okay, that is the end of the explanation of my topics. I really hope this has helped. Please do not hesitate to contact me if you have any questions.